For nearly a year, we have sought to engage in good faith to provide a constructive solution. What we encountered instead was a lack of due process as the administration paid no attention to facts and tried to insert itself into negotiations between private businesses. We want to see untrusted Chinese apps removed from U.S. app stores. With parent companies based in China, apps like TikTok, WeChat, and others are significant threats to personal data of American citizens, not to mention tools for CCP content censorship. Well, for more, let's go to tech and media analyst Jonathan Broughton in London. He's the Managing Director of Workshare Consulting in London. Welcome back to the program, Jonathan. Now, when the Trump administration first raised this idea that it would threaten to ban TikTok in the US unless it spun off its US assets, it did raise a few eyebrows, not only in the US, but around the world. Now, the bite dance seems to have fired the latest salvo in suing the US government over this order. Do you think it'd be successful? It's, it's a good question. Um, I think to answer that, we need to look at the structure of executive orders in general. Um, in general, executive orders tend to, rather than creating legislation, uh, point existing departments and point to existing legislation. Um, to get that enforced a little bit faster. So where we have seen successful challenges in the past, such as, for example, Trump's own order on uh, immigration, which was successfully introduced in Hawaii by a judge there, um, they've relied on specific points of law. Now, this executive order, and in fact a few executive orders which come from President Trump, um, don't necessarily rely on existing legislation or departments in quite that way. Instead, they, they legislate very hard and very direct. Now, in this case, uh, this piece of uh, this piece of uh, I would say law, but this piece of um, instruction from President Trump enacts the IP uh, IEEPA uh, rules, which effectively are emergency legislation defined uh, as something which protects the United States from a clear and present foreign threat in a state of national emergency. So it's it's very. Uh, it's very deep reaching and wide ranging legislation that Trump is drawing on um, for exactly this. It makes it very difficult for TikTok to order or make the argument for um, due process. Uh, in this case, the due process that they are you know, potentially in the, the right about may not even be relevant to the executive order which is in place. Now, what do you make of this exclusive in the Wall Street Journal that says uh, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg actually uh, effectively lobbied the US government against TikTok ahead of this executive order? I is that something within the realm of possibility given Mark Zuckerberg's, uh, I guess, ruthless corporate nature? It's something I can certainly believe. Um, I, I find it... Um I find it uh, perhaps a little bit uh, convenient the sort of timing of this being released, whether it's whether it's right now. Um, it seems a little bit suspicious that the Wall Street Journal sat on it, or perhaps it was leaked to them at this specific occasion. Um, but you are right in saying that Facebook, um, of all of the the social networks out there at the moment, perhaps has the most to lose by TikTok effectively taking um, the next generation of social media users. Of course, we know. Facebook's, or one of the problems Facebook is currently facing is the fact that it has an aging user base. Um, they're not, they're sort of millennials and above, they're not the, the latest generation who are in fact using uh, the, the newer social platforms and indeed even games to get their social fix. We also know that uh, Donald Trump's executive orders in the past have faced legal challenges and have in fact been overruled by courts in, in some cases. Do you expect that uh, ByteDance will be able to hold on to TikTok at the end of this? 
I slightly view this legal challenge as uh, TikTok trying to uh, win an argument in the long term to save face, to make the point that they're in fact not involved with passing US secrets to, uh, to back to China. Um, I actually don't think it's going to be relevant to whether they overturn the executive order. I believe that the way the executive order is phrased, and I spent some time reading it today, um, it is very hard for them to actually overturn it. Uh, what TikTok is actually leaning on um, is the um, the interaction between TikTok and uh, CFUS, the uh, Committee for Foreign Investment in the United States. Um, and they're claiming there wasn't due process followed um, for the documentation that, say, TikTok provided um, and the questions that were asked and then the evidence that was then provided back to um, the executives who are using it. Even if TikTok are successful in proving that that due process was not followed, it doesn't necessarily relate back to the executive order sufficiently enough to have it overturned. Um, I'd say additionally, at the moment, there is an election to be fought in the States. Um, China is not popular with the American public, and a lot of Democrats would be very hesitant to throw their weight behind uh, China, which has been, you know, rightly or wrongly, blamed for a variety of situations up to and including this latest uh, spread of uh, a pandemic in the United States. OK, well, we'll see how the lawsuit unfolds. Jonathan Broughton in London, thank you again for joining us on the programme.